I'm always skeptical when a movie trumpets that is based on a true story. This is normally just marketing doublespeak, and what's actually depicted on the screen rarely mirrors real life. I have a hunch the same can be said about Cross of the Dutchman, the brand new Steam game that purports to be the true story of a 16th century freedom fighter named Pierre Gerlovs Donya. One look at the guy and it's clear that he's built to be an action hero. He towers above everybody else and has muscles larger than the nearby mountains. For a simple farmer, he's able to take on large groups of soldiers with his bare hands. And, as it turns out, that's a talent the local community needs. With the threat of the Saxon army invading the peaceful village, Piers sets out to assemble a rebel force to mount a defense. But before any of that can happen, our hero has to run the usual assortment of odd jobs and fetch quests. This usually involves running into a large group of thieves and soldiers. But don't worry about Piers' safety, because he's more than capable of beating up even the most well-equipped enemies. His standard punch will knock a bad guy out in just one or two good smacks, while the more powerful uppercut can defeat multiple enemies at once. Eventually our hero will realize that his bare fists won't be enough to win this war, so he upgrades to a sword. Just as before, the sword has a standard attack and a more powerful move that kills several enemies all at the same time. This secondary attack will eat away at our hero's stamina bar, so players will be forced to use it sparingly. Whether it's historically accurate or not, Cross the Dutchman has a simple and effective setup for a story. The problem is that it never does anything with its potential. From its two hour runtime to the bare bones combat, every element comes up short. This is an origin story that feels like it's missing an act. Although it looks like a Zelda style adventure game, Cross of the Dutchman sides more with action than exploration. Piers' world is small and isolated so every section looks the same. He never raids castles or fights through dungeons. He's mostly just running around the outdoor environment looking for Saxon soldiers. Pierre doesn't gain experience points or level up. He just bounces from one mission to the next without thinking about the impact on his family. What few upgrades there are prove to be inconsequential, as Cross the Dutchman is rarely difficult. Even when the battles escalate, you'll usually have a bunch of computer-controlled friends around letting you sit back and watch them do the heavy lifting. Sometimes the game will force our hero to be stealthy, making us sneak past guards with lanterns. I'm not sure if it's because I'm coming off of playing Metal Gear Solid 5 or not, but these stealth sections are wildly inadequate. For the most part, the guards will only see Pierre if he steps inside the small circle of light. He can be inches away from the soldier's face and they won't notice a thing. However, there are times when the enemies will suddenly see you from across the level, it makes no sense. But before I even had a chance to figure out the inconsistencies, the game was over and the credits were rolling. Cross the Dutchman is short and anticlimactic. Much of the emotional impact is undermined by a short story that doesn't properly display Pierce's struggles. As seeing how he eventually becomes a pirate, I can't help but feel like the game ends way too early. At the same time, with the gameplay being this shallow, I'm not sure I'd want it to last more than two hours. The dated presentation certainly doesn't help. Everything is displayed from a locked overhead perspective, so we're never able to move the camera or zoom in on the action. There's also no voice acting, which is desperately needed as Pierre attempts to convince the local townspeople to take up arms against the Saxon army. If Cross of the Dutchman succeeds at anything, it's at making me interested in the history of Pierre Gerlov's Danya. The stories I read about the man are fascinating, and I can see why Triangle Studios was inspired to make him the star of their action game. But even with the historical context, this game is weighed down by shallow combat, repetitive missions, and a short runtime. Cross of the Dutchman convinced me that Pierre can defeat an entire army, but it never gave me a reason to care. Hey, thanks for watching my review. This is our fourth review of the week. On Monday, we looked at Master Spy and Quest of Dungeons while Wednesday brought a review of Foul Play on PlayStation 4. We also previewed the very trippy Panoramical, which is what you're looking at on the screen right now. We'll be back next week with videos looking at 80 Days, Armello, Between Me and the Night, and more. So much coming up, so do me a favor and click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.